Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Boink Studios. And check us out on boinkstudios.com where you can see all of our projects, past, present, and future. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this is Tom Clark's Main Event. We're back once again here on Facebook Live. Glad you are with us. We're also recording today. The show will post on YouTube and is always available on boinkstudios.com. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. This is episode number 160, and yes, we're moving right along here on Facebook Live. I want to thank everyone for joining us here, of course, and for coming back each and every week. Much thanks to Heidi Ryan and the whole crew at Wrestling Rumors for giving us this platform. We do greatly appreciate it. So episode number 159 was AEW Full Gear and other stuff. We talked about the event, gave our predictions, and talked about a whole bunch of other things as well. But now we're here for something else. That's right, folks. The uh, impossible has happened. Hell is frozen over. Uh, cats and dogs living together. It's mass hysteria. That's right, folks. This time out, the main event is the return of CM Punk. So, um, if I look like a fan, I am a fan. I've said this before many times here on the program. If you've heard me say it one time, you've heard me say it a thousand times. I've always been a fan of Punk. I make no apologies for that. Um, I'm a pro wrestling fan. I make no apologies for that either. I have heard the arguments, discussions, and debates against a journalist uh, like myself, a pro wrestling writer, being a fan. I think that is absolute hogwash and nonsense. Uh, I don't believe that at all. And I think that's hot garbage, as it were. There you go. I'm going to trademark that puppy. And, um, and let's be honest, folks. An NBA analyst, does he not love the game? An NFL analyst, does he not love the game of football? I, come on, folks, perish the thought. You guys, we all know uh, uh, the, the deal here. You are fans. I am a fan as well. We love the business. We love pro wrestling. I'm all about it. Jim says, money heals all wounds. <laughs> I knew that was coming from somebody. Uh, Rebecca says, CM Punk and what is going on with Paige? I, dude, I don't know anything about Paige right now, Rebecca. My my number one topic of the day is CM Punk. I have no idea what's happening with Paige. Um. Uh, so yes, Chris makes a great point. Thank you, Chris, for that. I did put a post up the day this happened when I got back home that day. And I said, uh, where everyone should be well served to remember that CM Punk has signed a deal with Fox Sports, not WWE. Now, of course, it's a WWE show. WWE personality is going to be on there. But let's hope that Punk can just say whatever he wants to without fear of being shut down. But I will tell you this, as I've told you this a thousand times, if I've told you one time, WWE is still in control. If they don't want something being said on that show, they will either censor it on the replay or they will attempt to, I would guess, Vince McMahon is still the boss. So if Punk says something no one likes, you better believe it will be addressed. Period. And I don't care what anybody in that company says. Controversy is good. They don't believe that. I'm sorry. They don't believe that. If they did, then they would just let things happen. But they don't. WB is a very creatively stifling environment. And Punk has said that in his own words years ago. And many guys today would tell you that if they were allowed to or even could speak to you as a normal human. But as we all know, they are restrained. Uh, by the contract that they signed, in all in all due fairness, uh, but that's just the life they lead as being a WWE superstar. We all know how this thing goes. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate that, man. I got another one about Punk uh, hitting tomorrow on the chair shot, so check that out as well. I'm going to be writing about this, this stuff a bunch. Um, yeah, Pipe Bomb. WWE controls the narrative, Fox show or not. Jim, well spoken. Jim, well said. So what are your first thoughts about the return of the voice of the voiceless, the Second City Saint, the master of the Pipe Bomb? What is your what is your gut feeling? What are your are you happy? Are you ticked off? Are you indifferent? Do you even care anymore? Maybe some people don't care anymore. It's very well possible. Um, he's teased things over the past five years. Other people tease things about him that know him and near him and around him. Uh, nothing's ever happened. And now five years later, here we are. How are you feeling about this today? How are you feeling about it? Uh, what's everybody thinking about all this? Tony says, who cares? So there you go. 
Uh, Willie says, shut up. Well, Willie, it's a little rude. <laughs> Anthony says, I think it's cool. He somewhat came back. Yep. Uh, it's okay, Rebecca. Thank you for that. People, pe haters going to hate, man, you know. Uh, what's your shirt and don't care? <laughs> it's Young Bucks. It was actually a, a grab bag t-shirt. Uh, when I, I ordered the Mox t-shirt for my kid and the Jericho shirt for my, I mean, the, the Mox t-shirt for me and the Jericho shirt for my kid, we went to see Dynamite. This was a grab bag shirt. Uh, and plus my kid ended up with Taiji Ishimori, which is freaking awesome. The Bone Soldier. And I'm like, I should have got that one. It's not fair. Uh, Toby says, I'd love it much more if we went to AEW. Never thought it would ever happen. There was a ton of water under that bridge, but I'm all for it. Uh, nice, uh, uh, the, the, the Andrew says, love it that CM Punk is back. He's my all time favorite. There you go. Uh, see, all right. So it's, it's the young, see, it's the elite, the elite. Okay. I'm not going to say it. Chris says, in my opinion, at some point he will get his match with Triple H in a WrestleMania or Saudi Arabia. Please. God, uh, if, uh, he or she is really up there smiling down upon your boy. Please, God in heaven, don't let CM Punk wrestle a match in freaking Saudi Arabia. Because that will change this writer's perspective on a lot of things about this cat. And I hope that that does not happen. So there you go. Uh, Odin, open your ears, uh, 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 your majesty. And uh, and listen up, because I'm not, I'm not down with that at all. Robert says, thank the past. You stay in the past. As for the bad blood, he deserves a second chance. He deserved the first chance. Uh, and he deserved the main event of WrestleMania. He didn't get it. Uh, he deserved to not be fired on his wedding day via FedEx. He deserved not to be deserved not to be mocked and ridiculed uh, by the McMahons on national television for the past five years. They took they took unyielding shots at him. They've allowed the talents to speak out on the air about him to mention his name. They've shot down the crowd when they tried to chant CM Punk. They've done everything in their power to make him uh, a joke. I'm sorry. It's how I feel. And I. You know, I've, in the piece I've got coming out tomorrow, I said a lot of that is the old-fashioned pro wrestling nonsense that we as fans have seen for years in this business. Uh, and I would think WWE should be a step above that. But as much as they try to portray themselves as being an entertainment company, within they are still a pro wrestling company. And that's evidenced by the, the nonsense they shovel out, especially when it comes to criticizing punk uh, every, every chance they get. See, Rebecca said, do you think he returned to the ring? All right, Rebecca. So there you go. There is the big question. Um, let's see. Uh, I, don't, I went to the see the Dynamite in Charlotte, Tim. Yeah, it was a good show. Yeah. Miss Lopez, hello. First they chant for him, and now they criticize him for coming back. They do, but don't just don't pay attention to that. Just don't pay attention. Just let that go in one ear and out the other. Remember who you're talking about, okay? First of all, you have to know who you're talking about when it comes to the fans. But you also have to know you're talking about when it comes to the company. That's why we should never be surprised by anything that happens at WWE. We should never be upset or mad or hateful or spiteful or vindictive because it's WWE and they do whatever they want to do. And most of it is what? Two words. Hot garbage. We also should not be upset by anything that the fans as a herd, uh, uh, you know, moo. Okay. Sorry. It's how I feel. I'm not talking about you guys. You're, we're good. You and I are good. We're, you watch the show. How can I be upset with you? I'm just saying, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The herd mentality. If one fan says they all go, okay, and they all go with that dude, and, and everyone sounds like a bunch of morons. It's ridiculous that it has to be that way. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's going to be, because that's life. And that's how they roll. And that's how people roll. And you can't change it. You could you could want to change it all day. It's not going to happen. So if I'm you, just let that go in one ear, one ear not the other. So someone just said to me, uh, is, is Punk going to wrestle again? That's a billion dollar question at this point. Million dollar question because he get millions of dollars to do that crap. So here's the deal: is that going to happen again? And the piece I have coming out tomorrow, uh, I said, why would CM Punk even want to wrestle again? Look at the state of the company in 2019. I have two words for you, three words: Rusev, Lana, Lashley. That's featured on WWE programming. Why in the world would CM Punk want to come back to a show that hasn't learned anything? Why would he want to come back and face a creative team of 30 writers who haven't learned anything? Why would he want to do that? Maybe he'll just be happy and content with the gig on, on the uh, Fox with Fox on the on the on the on the paycheck, the logo on the paycheck, and be fine with that. Maybe that's what we're seeing. I don't know. Would I love to see him in the ring again? Sure. Chris says he's an analyst for Fox under contract with Fox. He's not going to be wrestling soon. He's an analyst. 
Uh, remember, he's going to be on every week. Chris, don't say he's not going to wrestle again anytime soon. You don't know that. A bunch of us said he was never going to come back and have anything to do with WWE. And you're right. He's not on WWE's payroll. I don't know if he's get, even getting a cut of WWE's money. I don't know. And I think that's hair splitting at this point. The fact is, he's back in the world of WWE. And you and I both know. We all know this, right? When you get back into that world... Things have a way of happening. Things have a way of clicking. People have a way of talking. Things have a way of unfolding in front of your very eyes. Next thing you know, bam, you were in a match. I'm not saying that's happening, but I'm not going to say it won't happen either. Barry says, Hall of Fame followed by WrestleMania match with Triple H followed by a handshake followed by a kick to Triple H uh, and you'll get and a year number one gesture. Eh. Barry, I, you know, Barry, I can't discount anything you said. Having said it, I don't want to see any of that. I don't want to see him work Triple H. I don't, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't need that played out in a ring. I just don't need it. I don't, and it's, you know what? It probably will happen. I don't want to see it happen. They'll sell tickets because it's going to happen, and I don't care about it. He didn't need to wrestle Triple H five years ago. He doesn't need to wrestle him five years later. There's more of a story now, but let's be honest. As he said before, if you remember what he said five years ago, okay, because I do, uh, he said that he needs to read that that Triple H needs to wrestle him more than he needs to wrestle Triple H. And I'm sorry, but that would be the fact now. Triple, I mean, uh, Punk could come back against Aleister Black, and the ratings would go through the roof on Raw. Believe that. That they'll be everything that Monday because of that. He could wrestle anybody. It doesn't have to be Triple H. He can he could face anyone at Mania. It doesn't have to be Triple H. You probably will be right if it happens. I don't think he needs to, and I don't want to see it. Nathan says, 50 bucks says Triple H would go over in a match. <laughs> Nathan, I'm not just saying this because we have a business association going down soon. Nathan, you, my friend, uh, just won the no prize for the show. Keep an eye on your mailbox. It's on the way. Because Triple H always goes over. All right, maybe that's not fair of me to say. Hunter has put people over over the past few years. But wasn't that the plan? So, so Punk supposedly said, he said five years ago, that he was supposed to go over on Hunter. But he didn't care. He's like, I don't care. I don't need to wrestle him. You need to wrestle me more than I need to wrestle you. I don't care about winning. The fact is, Hunter should have put him over to begin with. You remember when Hunter won? And Punk had this momentum, momentum, momentum. Watch this. Remember the Price is Right? Da, 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 the hiker going up the thing? How many old school Price is Right people do I have in the crowd today? Any of you? Listen. It, the, the hiker, you know, remember, and again, all of a sudden, boop, he falls off. That was punk. Momentum, 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 and crash. Am I wrong? Hunter killed it. He killed it, and he didn't have to. You mean to sit there and tell me that Triple H, with all the power he wields, especially, well, then and now, especially now, couldn't have said, I don't think I should go over tonight. This should be punk's night. And then on the, on, and caught it on the fly and said, you know what, Punk? Just let's just switch this up, man. I got no business winning this match. But no, he didn't. That's ego, baby. That's ego. That's a guy not doing the right thing for the business that night. He never should have beat Punk to begin with. It killed him in the eyes of the fans, even his fans that said, "What is he not going to be the guy or what? This sucks. Turn it." I'm sorry. It's how I feel. He killed it. Would he kill it again? I'm yeah. That's a bet right there because nah, I'm not losing fifty bucks, dude. Dude, I don't put anything past anyone in that company, especially the higher ups. Don't put any, dude. Sting lost to Triple H. Do you see a pattern? God, I'm getting fired up. The icon Sting. We've been needing to see Sting versus Taker for fifteen years, and they won't do it. And if they did, Taker's winning. Does that matter? I don't know. But Triple H had no business beating Sting. Sorry, it's how I feel. See what happens? Ranting, baby. Ranting. Miss Lopez says the fans are fickle. They are, but Miss Lopez, I submit to you that we're fickle because of that freaking company. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that we're innocent. I'm not saying that a lot of the, the, the sewage that is spewed forth online is WWE's fault. I'm not saying that. But if you had to break it down by percentage, I'd say 50% of the crap coming out of fans' mouths is a direct reaction and direct response to crap that comes out of that company. Prove me wrong. Someone prove me wrong. We could be better about this. We could be more adult, more professional, and more civilized the way we speak to each other. And to the talent, sometimes on social media, we have a lot of guts. 
a lot of empty courage to talk to people the way we talk to people, and we should be ashamed of ourselves. A lot, a lot of them, a lot of you guys should not you guys, but a lot of fans should be ashamed of themselves. But where does a lot of that come from? Man, I'm in a good mood today. Del says. Punk could work backstage. It's not for WWE and still debut in AEW. That's how to change the culture. Delvin, have you ever watched the show before? Delvin, if that is your real name, Delvin, I love that. Not going to happen, but I love it. Change the culture. Shut the front door. That's awesome. Do you imagine that? He's got he's gone on a show with a little WWE logo. I say it's actually not little. It's like that big. It's like covering the screen at this point, reminding everyone and their brother this WWE show. You better know that. Here's WWE logo. Here's a Fox logo, and this is our show, right? Awesome. And then the next week is on AW Dynamite. Shut up. I'd buy that for a dollar all day long. Not gonna happen. But that would be awesome. I would be all about that. Uh, what's up, Andy? Gary, what's up, brother? It's Survivor Series in Chicago. Oh, Barry, shut up. Is so, so, Barry, look it up. Someone look it up. Where is where is Survivor Series? Is it in Chicago? Because if it is, Katie, bar the door. Someone hit me. Speak it. Find it. Robbie says, you speak for what most of us are thinking. Thank you so much for being the voice. Robbie, am I the voice of the voiceless? Have I took Punk's spot in that role? I accept it with great fervor and passion. I'm just kidding. I don't know. James, what's up? Is it is Survivor Series in Chicago? It's in Illinois. It's in Chicago. It is in Chicago. <laughs> this is central casting. This is central casting. You can't do any better than this. You just, you can't. You can't do any better than this. Survivor Series is in Chicago. He's going to be there. Shut up. He's there. He may not be wrestling. It won't matter. He'll be there. Yeah. And by the way, CM Punk's uh, um, go to sleep looks a lot better than Kenta's go to sleep. Sorry. That guy created the move. It's horrible. I love Kenta. It's, It's not... Yeah, for real. Punks was much better, much smoother. Sorry, that's how I feel. Uh, Lance says CM Punk will not be back. Lance, brother, don't paint yourself in the corner, man. You can say you think that he won't be back. Hit me with that. I think he won't be back. Uh, Why are we talking about a has-been wrestler? AEW's Jericho is the... (laughs) I love when Jericho cut that promo in that video package, and he's like, people don't understand how hard it is to... Have to find a little bit of the bubbly. And he just changed his voice. That's great. That's great. I'm in such a good mood today. This is a great day. I'm not kidding. What's up, Orlando? Orlando with the best name ever. Orlando, my God, dude, I dig your name, dude. I'm not even playing around. Awesome. Uh, Hello, by the way. (laughs) Thanks for watching, man. CM Punk is my favorite wrestler, but he won't be back. Lance, tell me it's your opinion he won't be back. Don't paint yourself in a corner. I, You know what I said at one time? You'll never see Eric Bischoff on WWE programming. That'll never happen. I got shut up quick. I was the guy that said, CM Punk's not coming back. You'll never see him on anything related to WWE again. I got shut up real... I mean, I got shut up, period. Don't get shut up, man. Tell me that you don't want to see him back in WWE and WWE ring and that you don't think you will. I'm just saying... Dude, say whatever you want. It's fine. I don't care. I'm just saying, as a writer, I can't close the door on any of this stuff. Look at me right now and say, Tom Sting's never going to work Taker. Uh, they're both like 80, and it's it's over. Okay, sure. <laughs> the same people that say Goldberg would never come back, and if he did, he'd get booed out of the building. They would hate him. Okay, sure. The saying. I, I, you, you can't... Don't speak in absolutes. If you speak in absolutes, guess what? Bang, you're wrong. It's it's uh, you just it's not. Come on, it's not. No, no. Rebecca says he will be back. Facts, they all come back. Fact is, they all come back. Yeah. Lance says you do. Well, you do want to see him. You just don't want to see him there, right? Um. Here's my question, and we can shift the conversation. This piece is coming out tomorrow on thechairshot.com. Please read it. I would very much be appreciative of that, and I'll post the link. You know, I will. Does, why would he even want to come back? 
Why would he even want to? No, I'm, ta- no, I'm talking about backstage. I'm talking about why would he even want to get in a WWE ring again? Knowing what they did to him last time. And knowing that they haven't changed. Nothing's changed. NXT. People talk about, oh, Tom. NXT. D- D- NXT. It's the Jack. All right? Shut up. You're right. NXT's awesome. NXT rocks. They haven't changed. They haven't changed. If NXT loses every match at Survivor Series, what are you going to say then? Are you going to still take up for the company? Come on. They haven't learned a thing. They haven't They haven't gotten better. It's the same garbage rehashed. This, you people, not just you people, but me as well, we've been complaining for two years that the product is the worst it's ever been. With the exception of the McMahon-Helmsley era and then the authority. You see a, see a trend there? Uh, the worst it's ever been. Ridiculous storylines, convoluted storylines, angles that go nowhere, uh, promos that are so overly produced and overly rehearsed. Two words, Baron freaking Corbin. They haven't learned a thing. They haven't learned anything. And we're and Punk is supposed to believe that they would have his best interest at heart this time? Shut up. No chance. Brad says he used to have a lot of respect for Punk, but doing anything with WWE, sorry. Brad, I listen, I get your point. And I, part of me wants to agree with you, but I'll say the same thing to you that I said to you last week and the past year. Whatever a star or a talent chooses to do with his or her, her career is completely his or her call. They have to do what's best for themselves, for their health, for their family, for their mental stability, for their financial situation, for whatever they need in their lives. If they choose to come back, that is their call. Now, it's your call on how you react to it. You're perfectly entitled to hate the guy or love the guy. It's perfectly up to you. Perfectly fine, no matter how you feel. But try to temper your reaction based on the fact that it's their career, their livelihood, their physical well-being at stake, and not ours. That's just my opinion. Andy says, money, money, money. Believe that he's getting paid. For sure. Barry says, it's all about the almighty dog. All right, so let me ask you a question. Both you guys, Andy and Barry both. You can tag team me on this one. It's totally fine. i got no problem with that. And anyone that wants to chime in, do it. Do you think that CM Punk is a money guy? I'm not talking about is he a businessman. He's a businessman. You know that, right? He's He's been on the convention circuit and stuff since he left the company for a reason. He's got to get paid. He's a businessman. But if money were that important, do you think he would have walked out of a contract to begin with? Do you think he would have walked out of the largest pro wrestling company on the planet back when there was no, e, no AEW, back when New Japan wasn't really much of a thing at that time? Do you think he would have left? Would he have left if all he cared about was the money? Now, if you're saying to me, Tom, the money's run out. He needs it, so now he's back. Okay, I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm not going to say you're right, but I'm not going to say you're wrong. But I'm asking what you think. Is he a money guy? Matthew and Barry both say no. Here's my point. Okay, okay, okay. Don't attack me. Don't get all mad and get all huffy. I'm not attacking you. But before you, you come at me with anything else, let me rebut with this. Okay. I asked the question, do you think he's a money guy? You said no. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Now, uh, if you don't think he's a money guy, then how do you fault the guy for getting paid now? You see what I'm saying? How do you fault him now? Now, it, six months after he left... And, you know, he cut that that promo on, on the company and everything on Coke Command's podcast. And that's that was from the heart, baby. Believe that. If he'd showed up a month after that, talk about no respect. He stayed gone for five years. You mean to tell me that nobody in that company reached out in five years? I don't believe a word of that. I don't believe a word of that. I believe that's I believe a conversation was had or a text was done or something at some level. He could have come back at any time. Five years have passed. He's got no reason to come back now. He said himself that the, that the spot at Fox on the, on the backstage show intrigues him. He loves the idea of being an analyst. He is amazing on commentary. Did we forget the times he did commentary? He, 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 he outshined everyone there. Not just because he's good and he's experienced and he's talented, but because he's so entertaining and he's fun to listen to. That's not changed at all. I would hope not. I don't fault the guy at all for taking a payday. Now, if if the story were twisted and he would come back to WWE, I still wouldn't fault him. Would, I, would my personal opinion of him change a little bit? Maybe. I'm not going to lie to you. But as I said to you earlier, just a few minutes ago, it's his call. It's his call. Sorry about the... I, I know I'm missing a bunch of comments. I'm sorry. And it says, everyone's been calling uh, for Punk for five years, offering him a crap load of cash, and he's come back. I see him working mania. I do too. 
Andy, I'm with you. I see him working mania. What's up, Tammy? Welcome back to the show. I see him working mania as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. David says, uh, though he's not about the money, but I feel that uh, the day he left, the WWE went downhill. So what was the day the music died? I know this is a weird comparison. Roll with me on this. What was the day the music died? So supposedly, according to the song, it was the day that uh, Richie Valens, um, the big bopper, and uh, Buddy Holly passed away in the uh, plane crash. He said that was the day the music died. Um, for me, for my generation, uh, and, and for my age group, the day the music died was the day that John Lennon was killed. Okay, So let me translate that over. Is the day that the WWE died the day that CM Punk left? I'm, I'm not saying it is. I'm asking you the question. I, I know he's not dead. I'm not... I'm not trying to make light of the dead or anything that, that happened. Please don't misunderstand me here. Uh, but I'm asking a serious question. Was that the day that it died for you? Was that the day where you're like, it's not the same anymore? Because for me, if you're asking me, can I can I tell you what I think? Is that okay? Um, I, I it, It's not been the same. I God, I've missed this guy. I said it not too long ago. I said, man, I know there's a lot of stuff there. I don't know if he'll ever come back, but man, I miss him. I do. I just miss the guy. If I ever got the chance to meet or interview him or whatever, or just shake the guy's hand... I say, listen, straight up, no BS, no agenda on my part. I'm not trying to get famous because of talking to you, but I got to tell you straight up, I missed you, man. It wasn't the same without you. No matter what you do now, it's not been the same without you. That's just how I feel. Maybe no one sees that. Uh, had you down early. Th who said I was the early 30s? Who said I'm early? What I missed you. What was your, tell me who said I'm in my early 30s. Because he's my new favorite person. <laughs> Believe it, baby. Jim says to me, it's a full panic move by Fox because their ratings for backstage are horrible. I think Fox had a chance to convince WWE. Had to convince WWE. Maybe you're right, Jim. Maybe you're right. Could be. Sorry, Wilf. My show. I ain't changing anything, brother. My show. This is the turn of CM Punk. Roll with it, Jack. That's the topic of the show. Willie. Thank you, Willie. Early 30s. Andy, early 30s. Andy, you're not just a top, a top fan. You're the top fan. Early 30s, I'm taking it. You want, what do you want to go with? 33? Do it. I'm 33, baby. Believe that. All right. We're rolling with that. My, my great day just got better. Andy, you're my favorite now. Okay. Out of all my kids right here, Andy's my favorite. The rest of you are going to have to try to curry my favor now. Andy's already stepped to the forefront. He's at the front of the pack. You guys have to play catch up, man. Start buttering up the boy. Your boy. That's me. Juanito says the WWE died. It was, I, dude, I missed you. I'm so sorry. I missed your comment. Please, if you can go back and copy and paste it and put it back in there. I'm so sorry, man. I missed you. My apologies. So you were commenting about my my comparison of the day the music died, the day of wrestling died, and I'm sure you know what I'm gonna guess and say that you got some stuff in there, maybe about Owen, and yeah, 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 and, and, and a totally valid point. If that's what you're gonna hit me with, totally valid point. I, and again, I didn't mean to compare it in terms of like a life and death situation. Please don't take it that way. It's not what I meant by that. I just meant by like your enthusiasm for the product, your enthusiasm for that company. Like a lot of people, their enthusiasm for music just died. Uh, on the day that John Lennon was killed. They're like, I don't even want to listen to music right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Andy says, did it be died when it went PG? Miss Lopez, don't tell your age. Miss Lopez, you don't look a day over 30. Okay? How about that? CM Punk vs. Rollins this year's Mania main event. Oh, you could be. When The Rock left for Hollywood. Tony, that's an opinion, man. Tom, I met you at an event near Charlotte, and I know how old you are. We are close to the same age. Matthew, we met. Where where did we meet? I meet you at an event near Charlotte, and I know how old you are. We're close to the same age. Did we meet? How did we meet? Did we? Have I missed something? Nathan says, who is the question mark? Who is the question mark? That's a good thing. I, I don't know. Uh, pork chop cash? I'm guessing it's pork chop cash. I'm going to go with pork chop cash. The question mark is pork chop cash. It's a clever makeup trick. The man in the mask. Pork chop cash, the one and only. That's my guess. It's hard to see WWE now after living through and enjoying the Attitude Era. Nothing now would get that good. Okay, a lot of people agree with you, man. WrestleCade. I was not at WrestleCade, brother. I was not there. I'd like to go sometime, but I was not there. If you saw somebody there look like me, first of all, he's a handsome devil. 
Uh, but it wasn't me. It's just pure coincidence, but I was not there. Punk versus Shane with Shane going over. Vince is all smiles. <laughs> yeah, well, best in the world, right? You think there's a possibility of Austin coming back for one? David, at this point, I think Jesus Christ himself could show up and work a match. I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> never say never, man. I'm just saying. Not to be all you know like that. Uh, hey, Mark, what's going on, brother? Doing good, man. Doing great. To see your age, Tom. Jungle Boy reminds me of WCW, WCW Texas wrestler Steve Simpson. Oh, Shane, you got me. God, what a great comparison. Because Steve had a brother named Sean, right? Was it the Simpson, Steve and Sean Simpson? God, Lance, man, Lance, you are one of my favorite uh, uh, audience guys. Man, dude, that's freaking awesome. Now, God, you're totally right. Totally right. He does look... That's awesome. Way to go, man. I love when people pull stuff out at random, and I'm like, God, I should have thought of that. That's awesome. How cool is the Takers doing the Austin interview? We've been waiting for years. Yeah, that thing drops on the 24th on a Sunday, I think. Yeah. I'm anxious to see that. No update on the Velveteen Dream, Mark. I got nothing for you. Sorry, man. Stone Cold versus Punk. Ooh, Michael. Michael. Uh, Matthew, thanks for hanging out, man. Um, Austin versus Punk. Been talking about it for years. We've been talking about it for years on the show. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. It's it's more of a physical liability for Austin if he worked another match, not for Punk. Punk's fine. But I, I don't know. But guess what? Never freaking say never. You hear me? For real. Um, AJ, yeah, the people talking about me wanting AJ back. I love AJ. I've always loved AJ. Uh, where Tony's Tony is hurt. To my knowledge, she's still recovering. My opinion on Miles quitting. Man, the ACH thing is is a train wreck. Um, the reaction I think has become and overshadowed the action at this point. Just my opinion. I'm not an African American fan, and I don't know uh, the struggle, and I don't use that word to be, you know, sound like a. a you know, a, a a pampered white guy trying to sound like he he cares. I'm not trying to do that, but I don't know the reality of a, of a black man's life in in America because I'm not African American. I don't know what he goes through. I don't know what he's had to endure. I can guess, but I don't know what that feels like. So I, I don't know if if I were African American, would my would my opinion be different? My opinion as it stands right now is I don't fault the guy for being upset, and if what he's saying is true, shame on that company. But it kind of feels like his reaction is a lot bigger than the action itself. When you start hurling cursing, curse words on social media, and you call Jay Lethal and Uncle Tom, come on, man. I mean, what? I mean, at that point, I think you've kind of, not that you don't have a right to be upset. He is as mad today as he was the day it happened. I mean, I mean, enraged, steaming, fuming at the camera. I, I don't know what that feels like. I don't know. But I'm like, at the same time, I'm thinking, dude. You're, you're losing support here, I think, from not just from the white fans or Latino fans, but maybe from the African-American fans as well. They're like, dude, you need to ease up a little bit. Like, we got your point, but man, don't attack Jay. What did Jay do? I'm sorry. That's kind of how I feel. Um, David, thanks for hanging out, man. Uh, it's all-time dream team with... Uh, Corey, I don't know what you're talking about, man. My bad. Uh, burn them bridges. What time is it? How are we doing on time? I feel like I've been talking forever. Are y'all still with us? Is anyone tired of talking about punk at this point? We can move on to something else if you want to. Slopez says Miles are getting a push. Yeah, for sure. We'll see what happens, but yeah. Uh, Tammy says, can we all just agree that the Bobby and the Lana and Russo story? Tammy, if there's one thing we can all agree on is that when it comes to the storyline between Lana, Rusev, and Lashley, two words, Hot garbage. Uh, 100% you're right about that. Uh, it's not just bad, Andy. It's crazy bad. It's awful. It sucks. It stinks to join up. I just can't, you can't watch it without going, ah, oh, God. I put a, uh, I put a, uh, um, a poll on Twitter the other day. By the way, if you don't follow me on Twitter, it's at Tom Clark Writes, W R I T E S, Tom Clark Writes. Um, go check it out and I'll follow you, man, if you follow me, right? But I put a poll up and I said, uh, how sick are, what's your opinion on the Lana Rusev, uh, Lashley love triangle? And I think my choices were, uh, um, oh, I said, uh, oh God, and it was make it stop. Um, I can't take any more and kill me now. 
were my first four choices. I'm all of the above. Will says, talk about AEW. Will, don't tell me what to do, baby. I tell you what to do, okay? We do this on my time, not yours, Wilf, okay? And by the way, Wilf, we don't have to wait till Sunday. We can do this right here, right now, Wilf. Come on. I'm just playing. Uh, what do you want to talk about AEW, man? What do you want to talk about? Hit me. Thoughts on the Omega Moxley match. Thought it was an overdone death match. Okay, Jim, we're going to talk about AEW. Jim, start us off, man. He teed us up. Um, that match was hard to watch. And I w- here's what I will say about the, the so-called death match, which wasn't really a death match. A lot of stuff was gimmicked. Um, uh, it, it, I was completely emotionally invested. I sat in this office with a buddy of mine. We had that going on the TV. I was completely emotionally invested in every way, shape, and form. I was sucked in. I, and I know better. I knew that glass wasn't real. When he brought that glass out of that bag, I looked at my buddy and I said, this glass is not real. That's sugar glass. I knew it by looking at it. I just did. Not that I'm, oh, Tom's going to ruin his viewing experience by being smart. I didn't mean it that way. I'm just saying, I could tell by looking at it. And then, because I've seen gimmick glass before, and then he went like that between the fingers. Guess what? I still popped off of it. When when uh, Moxley is crawling across the glass, guess what? I still popped off of it. I did. I'm like, oh my God, dude, he's crawling over it. Because I was emotionally invested. What is the number one goal of any pro wrestler in the business today? Whether it's on WWE level, AW, New Japan, Impact, and all up and down the board. What's the number one reaction? What's the number one goal? If you say to make money, that's not the... Okay, that's up there. But to get a reaction. Okay? To make people care. You have to make people care about what you're doing. If you're in there because you were a fan and now you think you want to be a wrestler, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You want to make those people pop. You want to make them feel what you're giving them. You want them to see what you're giving them, connect to it and go, oh my God, that was amazing. They did that. I I, I, I popped for it. I was invested. I connected. Mission accomplished. They got people feeling something. Okay? That That was the point of that was to get people hooked, and they did it, and it was, in that regard, it was highly successful. Highly successful. Did I agree with all of the, uh, did I agree, well, what's up, Sandy? Did I agree with everything they did in terms of shock value? No. But guess what? They did it. It's over now. It's done. Moxley worked the first match the next week, and Kenny's supposedly not cleared. You see that video? Kenny's back's all, like, stitched up and stuff. And he's like, what What about Mox? And he's like, Mox was actually cleared. He was beaten up. He was cleared. That was great. Because Mox is like, screw this. I'm not laying down for him. I'm getting back up. All right. And then Darby Allen comes out and says, John Moxley, I accept. It's good stuff. Uh, but, but Catch Jack and uh, Terry Funk, best death match. Yeah, you're right about that. That's actual death match. Brody versus, versus Butcher. Yeah. If you really want a death match, Bruce or Brody, I'd duel the Butcher. No doubt about it. Willie says, AEW suck. Willie, tell us how you really feel, man. It is a storyline, Brad, 100%. Uh, they had a goal that, uh, in mind, and they had a mission to accomplish. They accomplished that mission. They put on a, a, an... In- Listen, it was an incredible match. Whether you hated it or loved it, it doesn't matter. It was... You cannot deny the effort that both guys put in. They put in a lot of effort to make you believe everything that you were seeing. It, you, if you say to me you don't respect the effort, then I have to question whether or not you actually respect the business of pro wrestling. Because that was maximum effort from start to finish. And I applaud both of them for that. Both of them. Okay? Bring back Mitch the potted plant. God, Reggie, bite your tongue. What's up, Claire? Claire, are you on the way home from work today? Is that what you're doing? Claire watches from the United Kingdom and listens to the show as she's driving home from work. Claire, if you're doing that today, be safe, please. Did I just see that you, did you get married or got engaged? I think I've asked you this before. Congratulations, by the way. Tammy says, I'm not sure about the women on AEW. Boy, neither is anyone else, Tammy. I'll give you that for a fact. Oh, Claire, good. Claire's driving home on the wrong side of the road, Claire. Well, not for you. You know what the coolest thing ever to me is? Is that Claire, our friend Claire. Hello, Claire. Shout out from Tom Clark's main event. Thank you for being a great fan. Uh, Claire is right now driving home in the United Kingdom and she's listening to your boy right now all up in her ears. Uh, and that's, well, maybe not cause you can't drive with him, but the phone's on the seat or it's in the Bluetooth. It's doing something uh, and, and she's listening and that's awesome. And thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. It means a lot to me. It means loads to me. Thank you so much. That's freaking great. Oh, and by the way, on the engagement, 
Rewind. Congratulations on the engagement. You're out of your mind, but congratulations. I'm just kidding. Corey says, uh, who's your all-time all-star team with Survivor Series coming up? Oh, dude, I've never thought about that before. Eric says, my opinion is hot garbage. You should make a shirt. <laughs> I've thought about that. Where does MJF go from here? Can't really challenge Jericho at this point. Feud with Cody doesn't do much for either. All right, Nathan. So I'm with you on your opinion, totally. But I'll say this. They needed another top heel. Um, I don't think he should join the inner circle. I, they're going to they're gonna branch him off with Wardlow now. Wardlow is, I can't even hardly say it without going, Bleh, right? Wardlow is going to be with MJF now. MJF can be his mouthpiece. Wardlow can be the muscle. MJF will kind of be like if they put the Miz with Batista or something. That would kind of be what I would compare that to. Where, you know, Miz is kind of, M- MJF to me, and here, here you go, Nathan, and everybody else listening. Uh, uh, to me, MJF is a successful version of the Miz. And I don't mean any disrespect to the Miz when I say this, but I think MJF is what WWE believes the Miz can be as a heel and has been as a heel, and he's not. It's MJF. If you took the reins and took the governor off of the Miz and put him in AEW, he would probably be MJF as a heel. Because he could cut loose and say whatever he wanted to say. It wouldn't make a difference. But I think that's what that's what MJF is in AEW, is what WWE believes that The Miz is as a heel. But that's my view. Uh, da, 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 da. Wish wrestling was like you used to be in the days of Dick the Bruiser. Use all nuts and chains. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dick the Bruiser was a classic, man, for sure. Classic. Yeah, drive safe, Claire. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate that. Orange Cassidy is the R Truth of AEW. Uh, Shane, here's my answer to that. R Truth is a is a good freaking worker, and he's a former world champion. Orange Cassidy hasn't proven to be either of those at this point. If you're talking about it from a comedy standpoint, I'll give you that. Joel says MJF is not that great. Joel, uh, in terms of what? Are you talking about ring work or are you talking about on the mic? Because if you're talking about on the mic, you're sorely mistaken. Sorely mistaken. Okay. No, Willie, I have no belts. I have a thing about title belts. It's a weird thing. It's a personal thing with me. I don't want to buy a title belt. Uh, You know, I just, I don't know. I see fans with them over their shoulders at shows, and some of them wearing them. And I get you want to be a fan, but like, if, if, if I were going to see an NFL game, would I have on a replica Super Bowl ring? Do you know what I'm saying? Would I, if I go to see NBA, would I have on a replica NBA ring, championship ring? If I went to see a hockey game, would I be carrying around a replica of the Stanley Cup? No. The answer to all those questions is no. Now, I'm not going to fault anyone for doing it. And if you have a closet full of belts or a wall full of belts, good on you. Go with God. It's just not something I want to do. Like, I'm not saying I'd be embarrassed by it. That's not it. I mean, I walk around in wrestling t-shirts and I'm the age that I am. 33, remember? There you go. So, uh, um, uh, but anyway, I, uh, I I just to me it's just like I don't know, I don't know. I it's hard for me to differentiate between a title belt and the championship. I know there's a difference. I get it. But I'm talking about Punk. Remember the line he had with that fan in the, in the crowd that had the WWE championship, and he said he said, "Yo, you know what?" He said, "That's a title belt. This is the WWE championship." And you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of weird about that. I was call, I was called out on the show one time by someone who was like, "What do you mean? What's the big deal?" And I'm like. It's just how I feel. I'm just not, I'm not down with that. I'm just, I have no desire to buy one. They look cool, but I have no desire to own one. Am I watching WWE's backstage next week? If I can get FS1, I have to look and see if I can get it. Will says the only one I would buy is a smoking skull belt. That thing was classic for sure. Chip says he has 17. Dang, Chip. You got a wall cleared out, brother. Miss Lopez says after the show, I want, I, I, I saw people with their belts and wrestling outside the arena for them. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, Victor says, NXT got me turn off this week, speaking that Dakota Kai was going to turn heel. NXT was an odd... Did NXT feel odd? All right, so... I'm not so completely in the bag for AEW that I can't tell you that I don't, I'm not... I'm, I'm, I'm happy with everything because I'm not. You guys know that. But having said that, AEW Dynamite was much better this week than, than NXT, in my humble opinion. Much better. I think it was the best episode of Dynamite that they've ever done. It flowed. I'm going to go watch the whole thing again if the show's every day. It flowed so well from start to finish. Nothing felt weird. Nothing felt forced. Nothing felt weak. I mean, from start to finish, it was a good show. The women, are, they are what they are. They're coming right now. they got to get a handle on it. But I think from overall entertainment value, from the beginning of Hour 1 to the end of Hour 2, I believe it was the best episode they've done so far. And NXT felt really weird. You had two different women getting busted up. I mean, Mia Yim got busted up. 
I mean, it's gory. They didn't even shoot it. You see that? And like it, it wasn't just blowing them out. It looked like someone had took like a scoop of red like jelly and just chunked it on the mat. That was intense. Okay, intense, man. Uh, Christopher's had an NXT set this week. Uh, Yim looked terrible. And listen, uh, Miss Lopez, we have talked before. What's up, Callie? Kelly? What's up, Kelly? We've talked before here on the show, my personal opinion, that me and Yim, it's maybe not the main event powerhouse that maybe she thinks she is and that the company thinks she is. And anytime you say the words, all due respect, it sounds like you're going to disrespect someone. I don't mean to. I'm talking about from my personal taste, from what I've witnessed. I've made it known here on the program before. I just feel as though she's maybe not, maybe what she thinks she is. And she's certainly got the experience. She's certainly got the talent. But can she put all those things together and make you want to pay to see her? I don't know the answer to that. Only you can answer that. Tammy says, yes, it did be strange to me. I agree with you about NXT. Sandy, my man, I've given you a couple of shout outs here. Sandy's in Germany, everybody. Sandy, you're a top fan. I appreciate you watching. Shane says the best thing about NXT was Bailey hitting Shane with a boy got a pop, didn't it? For sure. Hello, Ryan and Binghamton. Binghamton is where, Ryan? That's the UK, right? Where I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I tell me where Binghamton is, and please don't laugh at my ignorance. My geographical ignorance. I apologize. I'm sorry. Walter versus Brock. I wrote that piece a year ago. True story. I did. You can go look it up. Maybe not a year. I've written it a couple different times. Yeah, I was saying that long before uh, a lot of people were, for real. Jim, yeah, yeah, the show did feel choppy. The show did feel choppy. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah, no, no, I'm with you. I get what you're saying. Like what you yeah, no, no, I get it for sure. It didn't it didn't it didn't flow. A dynamite flowed this week. I'm gonna watch it again for sure. South of Syracuse. Wow, boy, was I off. <laughs> now you're all laughing in my geographical ignorance. Be nice to me, okay? What was I thinking of? Birmingham, England. Is that right? Is there? Yeah. God, man. There you go. Willie versus Brock. Willie, good luck, brother. An hour from Syracuse. Man, you know I've never been to New York. If I were to visit New York, would you guys hang out with me? Would that be cool? Let's go see a show. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but that'd be cool. I'm down with it for sure. Robbie says, I'm watching a syndicated game show. 25 words or less. We'll listen to you. Becky and Seth... Robbie's watching a syndicated game show while listening to to me. Becky and Seth one on one two. Yeah, versus Biggie and Xavier. Oh yeah, well. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay, I got you. Willie says I can beat Brock. How about Tom versus Brock? Miss Lopez, I value my physical well being. No, no, there is a Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, but there's one in England too, right? Birmingham, Birmingham, England. I'm not so geographically ignorant that I don't know that. That's what I was thinking when I heard the word Binghamton. 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 Come to Montreal. I've never been up north to the Great White North. I hear it's crazy cold up there. I don't do the cold really well. My all-time star team, uh, all-star team is Andre the Giant, Goldberg, Triple H, HBK, Ricky the Dragon's team. But ooh, that's interesting. I love that idea. I love that idea. You know what? I may, uh, I may sit down and figure that out. Western New York. Cool. Uh, PS4, yeah. Man, I've come down. I was like on an emotional high when we started this show. Now I'm all tired. Isn't that weird? It's like coming down off a drug or something, which I wouldn't know anything about. It's so hot in my office right now. I can't even tell you how hot it is. It's crazy. What's up, Laura? Wish all these extras would stay out of matches now. Then it's okay, but every match is ridiculous. So what are you talking about when you say extras? What are you talking about specifically? Elaborate, please, for me. Tom, uh, Dynamite Kid, Tom was, um, uh, Bellington? What's his last name? Bellington? Someone look that up for me. Tom Billington. Billington? Is that right? Yeah. Who's happy that Rhonda's coming back? This guy. Is Rhonda coming back? Boy, you met, I missed a headline somewhere. Did, did she have a baby yet? Wasn't the whole point of leaving to have a baby? What happened to that? I don't know how I feel about it. I got to be honest with you. I don't know how I feel about it. Honestly. Michael says, love the way that AEW does the Orange Cassidy segments. I'll put, uh, Michael, I'll agree with you to a certain, they are entertaining because he's, he he's still diving through the ropes and taking people out when he probably shouldn't, but he's not wrestled a match and more importantly, he's not won a match. 
So we'll see if they how long they continue on this. Hey, Jeff, and I'm, I'm with you, my friend. I dig into NWA Power as well. Do we need to put an APB on Sarah Logan? Maybe so. Is she is she hurt? Maybe Sarah's hurt. Who cut her finger off, Tony? Was that Sarah? Is that what you're talking about? Who are we talking about here? Someone cut her finger off? Shut up. Rusev can't do the job. Travis Shum likes. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're talking about there. Uh, let's see. Brock versus CM Punk. So CM Punk can get his head knocked off. Gang, Corey's not a CM Punk fan. Ryan, why don't they push C- uh, Drew McIntyre off? Brother, you find out. You tell me. We'll both know. I couldn't tell you. Toby says he can't wait to see Liv Morgan. I'm indifferent to Liv Morgan. I don't think Liv Morgan's done anything to set fire to that company. And I certainly don't think she's done anything to make me go want to go pay to go see her. I know that's mean, or it's, I don't mean it to be mean spirited. It's just how I feel. I just don't, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling her at all. She is a gorgeous blonde with a great body, and she works for Vince McMahon, and I just don't, I, I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't care. It's not fair to her for me to say that, and I've said this to you guys before. It's not fair for me to say that about her. I know, I get it, but still, I'm just blah on the whole thing, to be honest. Uh, Rhonda. Oh, that's right, right. Well, she, uh, it's reattached though. She almost cut it off. Yeah, and it's reattached. There you go. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. There you go. Oh, how's everybody feeling today, man? Uh, anybody got any good plans? So last night, me and the fam went to see the Christmas lights. Uh, it was awesome. You guys know I'm a Christmas dude. The Santa hat will be coming out here shortly for the great big fat Christmas episode of the show. Can't wait for that one. Yay, Christmas. I love Christmas. I can't help it. I look forward to the crap every year. My tree went up on November 1st. Recognize. Don't be a Grinch. Don't hate. All right. Haters hate. Don't be a Grinch. Don't be a Grinch at Christmas. What was the SpongeBob song? SpongeBob song? No. What was it? I can't remember the song. Don't be a... It wasn't a Scrooge. It was something about... Anyway. I can't remember. Uh, anyway. Don't be like that. Christmas. Okay? It's important. Tubby says, Tom, she's hot. That's enough for me. Well, there you go. Uh, da, 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 da. When we see Nia Jax again. Oh, hopefully not soon. I'm sorry. I'm not sold on her either. I'm not sold on her at all. They they got her busy doing Total Divas. Why do I need to see Nia Jax, who's supposedly not a diva, and squashes divas on Total Divas? I don't get that. Instead of ye. Wilf says, bah humbug. You know what? I got nothing to say to you, Wilf. Nothing. Tony says his daughter's born on Christmas Day. Man, happy early birthday to your daughter, Tony. That's awesome. Actually, my parents were married on Christmas Eve. My mom and dad. Long time ago, man. So, yeah. Uh, James says, Nia Jax, bring her back. God, man. Bite your tongue clean out of your head, man. For real. All right, I'm getting tired. I got lots to do after the show today. I am i don't know if we're going to take it home, but let's let's hit us with a few more questions before we do decide to take it home. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we get out of here? Brad says, can't wait to see Charlotte Desmond's Iowa. Uh, I've seen Charlotte in person. She's a good worker, man. She is. Yeah. Uh, what else you got for me? Any questions? Any comments? Questions? Comments? Words of wisdom? Uh, I think it's good, Shane. I think uh, Kong cutting hair gives her a... a it, it, it kind of uh, enhances her gimmick. I'm okay with that. She's like a predator now. Like She's taking trophies with her. That's pretty cool. Better than cutting off a finger, I suppose. Uh, what you, uh, they say, sorry about me, but uh, James, I want you to say sorry to me, but I don't know what you, James, I don't know what you're talking about. You lost me, brother. Um, what brawl are we talking about from last night? What brawl are we talking about? Is AJ getting face turned soon? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think Mickey's retired. I could be wrong, but I don't think she has. AJ Triple Threat Survivor Series will steal the show. Yeah, probably so. AJ, Roderick Strong, and Shinsuke Nakamura. I'd pay to see that. You got me. You had me at Shinsuke, to be honest. I'm sorry. I still love the guy. I do. What's so great about MJF? Go listen to his promos, man. He's awesome. CM Punk will be a surprise Rumble entry. Uh, I don't know if I, how I feel about that, Keith. I don't know. AW does need a better women's division, Miss Lopez. You're 150% right about that. Whether or not they're going to make it happen, I don't know. We thought they had a great division on paper before they started, yes? Then you saw it in action, you're like, no, that's, no, 
Uh-uh. Ugh. Why? No with this again. No, this is terrible. So, Max and OVW. I don't know Max. I'm going to have to look her up. A couple people said that. Oh, I don't know about the football game Raw, man. Who was it? What teams? I missed it. What were your thoughts on MJF and Y2J promo? I loved it, Isaac. Love it. Love it. Those two guys have chemistry. Chris mentioned Hoovy. Hoovy to Guerrero. That was awesome. I loved that. He's like, who the heck is Hoovy? That was great. Mark says she works. Uh, uh, he works for Fox under the beast, so to be honest, he probably won't wrestle at all. Don't count. Mark, don't say that. You can say you don't think he will. I get that, but I would never say never, man, for sure. Not that you are, but I don't know. I love Awesome Kong, Corey. I always I have always loved Awesome Kong. The worst thing Kong ever did was go to WWE because they destroyed that chick. They wrecked her. They wrecked that chick from top to bottom. It was terrible. It was a car wreck. Car wreck. Like, that just goes to show. It's not everyone should be in WWE. Not everyone should. Because they don't, at the end of the day, no, most of the time, they don't know how to handle things. They don't know how to handle you. They don't know what to do for you. That you, If you are an established star as she was, you, what are they going to do for you? They, they'll tell you everything. They'll promise you the moon, right? They'll say, oh, you're going to do this. You're going to make this amount of money. We're going to do, oh, we're, you are going to be a star. Okay, prove it. I wouldn't take a chance. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Oh, hear the bump? I'm bad. They said, just an idea. What do you think about Maria Canellas, Lana, and Mae Young's corpse forming a new f- Oh, my God. And guess what, uh, Nathan? Uh, Mae Young could probably still outwork both of them, even right now. Mae Young, back from the grave, can outwork both of them right now. Believe that. You see AAA, AAA is live on, on Facebook Live on Wednesday. No, I didn't know that. I can't watch it, Vic. Vic, I'm already, I got NXT and AEW going at the same time on two different TVs. I can't. I'm covering AEW every Wednesday. And I, I can't, I, I got a third screen, but I can't, I, I, dude, I might have a seizure, brain meltdown, poof, I'm dead, then no more show, Vic, who's going to take over the show, you Vic, I can't just leave the show to you Vic, come on, the people want this, the goodness that is Tom, I can't say that with a straight face, I got a face made for radio, baby. Let's see CM Punk doing commentary on SmackDown, I think he'll be doing commentary like crazy, my pen WB is like Eddie Groh's, um, Theme is uh, lie, cheat, and steal. They all know how to do it and ruin some people. For sure about that. All right, folks. I think that's going to be all we do. We've been going for about an hour. Yes, uh, rest in peace, Eddie Guerrero. This week was the anniversary of his passing. Was it the anniversary of his passing or his birthday? Was it his birthday? I think it was his birthday. The business sorely misses him. Uh, so, yeah. Jim says, let's leave this a safe space where we never speak of Alana's super sex scandal rundown. Uh, done, done, done. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm with Jim. No more talk about that because she did repeat the word sex like 43 times in that promo. Mark, I like Scarlet Bordeaux. I don't love Scarlet Bordeaux. I just, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm all for someone doing better for themselves in their career. Hopefully it works out. Yes, I do think Impact puts the world title on Tessa. I do. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for hanging out. All right, folks, I think that's all I got for you. I got other stuff to tend to today. Uh, listen, I keep reminding everyone here. Pay attention to my Facebook page, okay? On Black Friday, you know what day that is? Anybody? The day after Turkey Day, okay? Day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, your boy's Facebook page is going to be lit up. And I'm going to post all kinds of links and all the information about what I'm doing from that point on. And by the way, the show's not ending. Relax. Tom Clark's main event is still here as long as the people will have it, as long as I want to do it, and the combination of both. Bam! We're here. That's it. Okay? But I'm talking about, in addition to that, I'm going to be doing some other cool, awesome stuff that I can't talk about right now. It's a secret. It's a secret. You'll find out Black Friday. Don't miss it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be loads of fun. You won't be able to handle it. It's going to be so much fun. You're going to be collapsing. It's going to be so much fun. You're going to be over, bent over. It's just going to be, oh my God, I can't handle it anymore because this is so much awesome goodness in one day. Guess what? It's coming. Black Friday. Don't miss it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I think that's all we got for you. Thanks you so much, as always. We do appreciate it. And we will see you next time on Tom Clark's main event.